Hello, and welcome to our podcast. For the last three years, Hope Church South Bedfordshire here in the UK has had people meeting on weekdays to discuss God's Word together. We've moved this discussion onto this podcast so others in our congregation, our area, and the wider world can enjoy God with us. In this episode, we're looking at the book of Mark in the New Testament, and we expect as we read, God will teach us and we will help each other learn more. As you listen to the prayer, the reading, the discussion, while you're listening, ask God to reveal your heart. The book of Mark was written so that you would come to know who Jesus is. And our desire is that we will all come to know him better as we look at this together. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Bible study this morning. This morning, we're looking at Mark 14, uh, verses 14 to 23. And uh, Faith is going to pray, and Bob's going to read the passage for us. Thank you. Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity of meeting together and discussing. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and give us insight as that we would um, hear what you want to say to us today. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. When you see the abomination of desolation standing where it is, does not belong let the reader understand then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains let no one on the roof of his house go down or enter the house or take anything out the field go back to get his cloak how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers pray that this will not take place in winter because those will be days of distress, unequaled from the beginning when God created the world until now, to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. Okay, thank you, Faith. Thanks, Bob. And this morning we're continuing our discussion, um, which Jesus began in teaching his disciples about what was to come. And he described that the temple was going to be destroyed, not a stone would be left on top of another stone. He he spoke of, of a terrible time coming. And he was saying that actually the, the apostles would be arrested, would stand trial, uh, but, but the Holy Spirit would give them what to say in those settings. Um, and, and then it goes on further, and it's talking, he's, he's talking about what lies ahead. And he's his painting is is one of um, a lot of trouble coming, a lot of shaking in the nation, and um, very often when Christians look at these passages, they oh dear, we're not sure what's happening, and so they, they go quiet, and you end up with these ex- theories, and it's all very complex and involves Daniel and Ezekiel and all these other places all over, all coming together. What we're looking at when we're looking at Mark is we're just working through the passage of Jesus, what he said, um, what may lie behind that, our understanding of it, and what it is today. And so I think we need to take the same approach with this passage. Um, But in it, there are certain phrases that relate to other things which you might end up discussing. Um, Very often in a lot of these things, you find there is a prophetic foreshadowing of of sometimes it it has a a foreshortening where where you've got a prophetic word that seems to be fulfilled but will be fulfilled again in in a greater way later and you see this in the old testament prophetic um, writings and you see some of it here so um, there are 
Maccabees, there was a, a terrible um, oppression on, on Jewish religion. Circumcision was banned. People were, you know, uh, they put a, a pigs on the altar, tried to kill all the worship off in the temple. There, were, there was a, a, a terrible things. Um, that was seen, some people would say, oh, well, that's a fulfillment of Daniel. Or is what is to come? Well, probably both. And so you see some of these things that play out over time. The Romans were coming to devastate Jerusalem, as, as happened later. But that also points towards the end times. It decide which fits in where, and we don't really know. And being honest and saying we don't really know, because there are elements of this, is probably the best way to be. But what we're doing is we'll look at the passage and see what it says to us and work through it. So I'll open it up. Just a small thing. I'm just, so I've recently been reading Daniel um, and uh, this uh, abom ab abomination of desolation. Um, at the end of Daniel, twice, I think, yes, um, he, he says in uh, Daniel 12, 4, uh, 12, yeah, chapter 12, verse, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth and not, uh, knowledge will increase. And he also says in verse 9, he says, Go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and, and sealed up until the end of time. And it's just that it says in, in this, uh, it goes, uh, But when you see the abomination of desolation, stand where it should be. And then there's in brackets, which I presume it's Mark's, uh, Mark's writing, let the reader understand, because he's talking the, to the reader. It's, uh, it's, it might not be Jesus that says that. It, it could be. And it's just that by saying these things, Jesus is saying this: these are the beginning of the end times, because he's unsealed the book, if you like. Uh, it's what it, I think it's saying. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. So a re really... Um, it, there's a sense of urgency here. It's not a matter of sitting back and uh, it's a long time a, away. There is, these, these are the, the end times as such. And um, so the, the, book, uh, the book is now open and these are the beginnings of the end. I was just going to emphasise the uh, suddenness of it all. It's still going to happen without a uh, warning. Um, they won't have time to pack a suitcase before they leave and escape this uh, desolation um, or any preparation, um, which is what struck me initially. Mm. I think for folks in war zones, this is familiar. You know, some people get time to pack everything and go. Others leave with them backs running for it and 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 you know we it probably don't know as much of that as maybe some people um in other parts of the world currently and and if you look at this uh the historian eusepius <laughs> um the, the church history he basically said that during jerusalem when um the romans attacked this passage was known to Christians in Jerusalem, and they ran for the hills when the Roman army came in, and as a result were saved. And as an indicator, they saw that it set them running, and a lot of Christians survived the devastation of Jerusalem. And, and so you've got things in this passage that had some sort of fulfillment in the New Testament times, but have another fulfillment to do with the end times. And this is where, um, you know, people go, oh, well, that's been fulfilled. Well, yes, it has. But is that a sign of what's to come? And so there's a lot in this of, of, of wrestling through and trying to understand. But what we see very clearly is that the temple will be torn down. In there will be things that are abominable, that, that are not um, the right things in the temples, in, in the place of the temple. And so people see that in the physical, people see that in as a spiritual thing. There's a lot of different viewpoints on this, and this is where 
often disagreed. Um, but I can, I, th I think we can all agree it's very hard to piece together the future. <laughs> it's very hard to say, well, this is that, and 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 this means this, and this means, yes, it does, but it, it can also mean other things as well. And in this, there's a preparedness that Jesus is setting for his people for the future. He's telling them to be on their guard. He's telling them there's trouble coming. He's telling them, that all these things are going to take place right towards the end. He also speaks about the end as well, which we haven't got to yet in Mark. I was reading, if anyone says, look, here is the Christ. Um, look, here he is. Do not believe it. And, and there can be people now who, who sort of rise up and bring down and um, almost to lead lead people astray and and so that can be something that can happen in these these times too um but of course the christ had there was only one christ and he was speaking about it in this passage and so i think it, it's warning not to be misled and deceived by others um who who proclaim to say things that might not necessarily necessarily be true so i think it's having a, a discernment in these days too um in you know in in so you know circles or christian circles or not christian circles um people who don't speak the truth because the, the christ had come at this time and there will never be another there'll be another and there'll never be another jesus christ I think the main message here is uh, is be ready and be in contact with Christ um, within you and and you in Him, because times will get difficult and we're sort of leading it. We don't want to spoil it. We're sort of leading into the into the into the whole issue of tribulation, uh, and it's, uh, it's difficult to study this without actually studying Daniel and uh, and Revelation as well. Um, so quite com complex, but with Jesus speaking this, he's actually trying to instill a sense of, uh, of perhaps urgency into people that they need to be alongside and to get to, uh, to get close to him and to, uh, and to his father. She, uh, get through the difficulties that are ahead. And as you say, say Nigel, is that there's a lot of interpretations of what this is saying, whether it's uh, it, Jesus is prophesying actual facts or whether he's talking about uh, fu uh, even future events at the end of the times. Um, but he, he, the, the general direction of this is uh, get ready, uh, be ready, uh, and don't don't sort of uh, let it uh, let your your attention drift um and i think it's a it's a it's a good wall it uh pass it. i always used to say to people to get somebody to move from a to b it's got to be uncomfortable where you are or very attractive for where you're going and <laughs> here he's he's pointing out that it's going to be very uncomfortable if you just stay here stay where you are but if you've got if you've got the lord within you you will have the to uh to get through this and and that whether whether we whether this no I won't go there but um, anyhow that's what I was thinking. Yeah, thanks, David. I, I think in in some ways Jesus is preparing them. Mm. He didn't say these things. If Jesus said no 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 about that, it's all lovely, it's all nice. <laughs> uh, I don't think he'd have prepared people very well. He's telling them how it is to prepare them so they can prepare themselves. It's almost like brace yourselves, this is coming, uh, or get ready. Don't find the early church spending their time miserable, oh, the end of the world's coming, <laughs> oh, it's terrible. You, know, you don't get that feeling. There is joy. There's the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, yeah. goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, 
people. Their focus is on Jesus. Their focus is on his kingdom now and coming. Their focus is somewhere different, but they are aware of these things. And I think for us as Christians, it's helpful for us to recognize there is a, a way of viewing this. We need to be, be alert, as, as um, David's saying there. We need to keep our eyes open. We need to be looking at the signs going, wow, these are signs of the end of the times. Um, but actually, it's been a while coming, but they are signs. It could come at any moment. Some of that living with that, but at the same time, not being weighed down by it in a way that isn't biblical. And and there is a sense of walking with it, with Jesus through everything. It's a little bit like we said the other day. It's better to be with him than than not with him <laughs> um, in, 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 in no trouble. And so in this, there's a walking the way of Christ. There's a going with him. And there will be troubles along the way. And he's saying that very clearly. He's not hiding anything. He's saying there will be troubles. People won't like. Actually, there'll be massive turmoil in nations. There'll be whole things turning over. And, and some of you are going to get caught up in that. And so he's saying some of these things. And where, you know, I think um, we, we need to have our eyes open on that. And also the deception of saying this, there he is. I mean, just about every cult that has ever been have, have said, you know, this is Christ or well, this is, and, and led people astray. You know, there, there's all kinds of things that, that go on. And that has all been around since the first century of elements have been there. And I think in every generation, all these signs are there. We are near the end. We are near the end. And, and actually we need to live with that alertness, but not a fear. With an alertness, but not, not this doom. An alertness that God's kingdom is glorious and keeping the right focus. I don't think these guys, they may, might be worried about what lies ahead, but at this stage before the cross, but actually once you get past the cross, you don't find these guys miserable about it. You don't find Paul miserable. In Thessalonians, that they, they thought, oh, people are saying that Jesus has come back. He goes, no, 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 you haven't missed it. <laughs> There's a few things that haven't occurred yet. Look, relax. So Paul set people at peace. The whole, you know, if you read Thessalonians, you can find out all about that. Rest about the end times, letting them be peaceful about it. And there is something we need to be alert on, but at the same time, we need to be close to him in it. It does illustrate how close Jesus is to his father that he did these things. Um, yes, he's, he, I presume he's studied the, the scriptures and things, but it, 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 there's more than just knowledge here. It's, it's revelation uh, that's coming through. So he, he's actually close to his father. Uh, if we're looking at Mark and understanding who his nature and um and this warning here is is just sort of saying look stick close stay close and uh, don't falter um <clears throat> and it, uh, the power is there to uh, to come through um and uh and it's quite interesting in uh, but it, it, it does require quite a lot of studying to get uh, the background from all the rest of the scriptures and uh I, I've sort of uh, my 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 past uh, idea is that it's interesting, but I don't understand. It's uh, apart from the fact that I need to be ready. Uh, I don't need to really understand the intricacies of it. Some people really enjoy digging into it, um, but uh, the, the important thing is knowing who Christ is and uh, who, who who he is in you and who you are uh, in him confidence and that uh, that not a, an arrogant confidence but a confidence in in Christ in you you can do all things that uh, because he strengthens you um and uh, and that's that's the main thing i think uh, knowing what Christ has done on the cross um but uh, 
this is just Jesus said a warning, be, be close, stay close, and um, have your antennas out. <laughs> Yeah, I'd agree with that, uh, David. I think um, we don't need to understand all the deep theological uh, things which are very hard to understand. But I think later on in the chapter, it talks about um, uh, being ready. You know, that, that's the lesson for me that I need to be ready. I need to have a, a strong and relationship with Jesus. Um, so that when is the end times come, um, I'm ready. I'm prepared. I don't think it's something to get obsessed about. I don't think it's something to get over anxious about. Um, we don't. We're given a general indication, and I think it's it's good that we don't know the details of what's going to happen. Otherwise, we might get very very anxious and become uh, fearful about it. Uh, we know there's going to be difficult times ahead, know the details, but we know that we're secure in our relationship with Jesus, or we should be, and we can. that's the thing that we can do, make <laughs> sure that our relationship is safe and secure with Jesus, that we are close to him. I mean, Paul said, he says to, yeah. uh, to, 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 what's it? I, get, I would never get the right way around. He says to die is gain, but to live is Christ. And, um, I think as we live in, uh, in Christ, um, it's, uh, with that, without fear of death, um, it's, uh, it's a difficult one. But I, mean. I think Jesus, um, gives, um, a very enough signs. For us to know what's happening, mm. he doesn't give the, the the detail. There are details within it that are, are key indicators. Um, knowledge of Daniel in the, the people of you know, around reading Mark for the first time, um, there would have been a good knowledge of those things. But just like Old Testament knowledge hadn't really got Jesus quite right in their understanding of things. There are some of these things that were being re-understood in Jesus by the New Testament church. And there are some of these things that have, uh, you know, we, we study today and look at today. And so I think it's keeping our eyes on what's important and in a way, that peripheral vision so we can set Jesus as the main focus of our vision, but we also need a peripheral vision on the signs of what's happening and the signs of our times. We need to be people of the moment as well as of the future. <laughs> we need yeah. to be living um, with our feet on the ground. but our... And and there needs to be some of those things that we we walk through. And I think the fact that Jesus prepares us for tough times runs away when it gets tough he's with us he said i'd never leave you or forsake you i'm the, the age you know he, he's with us and and i think that is in tremendous comfort in this but as we're about to see tomorrow um it's going to get a bit more interesting so jesus is preparing the ground yes you'll you'll you know run for the hills get out of there go and actually, that saved a lot of lives, that very statement. And you look you know, back in, in the first century, you look back, there, there are a number of things here that that preparedness is actually very, very good. I was just thinking, I was just thinking when they came out of tomorrow that um, they shouldn't have looked back because Lot's wife looked back, didn't she? And she was destroyed. Just remind me of that. And I think that's very helpful, Jenny. And and I think um, that idea of not, but looking forward, is the right stance for us in all these things as well. That's really, you know, very helpful. Thanks, Jenny. All right. Well, thank you all, and we'll leave it there for today. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out.
Church, South Bedfordshire. You can find out off our website, www.hopecentral.co.uk. Also, you may like to visit us. We meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in Tillsworth, part of Dunstable uh, Wider. And um, you're welcome to visit us. We meet at half ten in the morning, and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there. Or, alternatively, you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our YouTube channel, which is also under Hope Church South Bedfordshire. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope God bless.